Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at file sharing and I want to take a little deeper dive into permissions. Uh, I've gotten some questions from people periodically about how to handle permissions and it can be a little confusing uh, without kind of understanding how things are going. So I'm going to try to give you kind of a, a high overview of the different permission settings available in OS 10 server, how those relate to your files and folders, and then just some uh, suggestions on maybe some ways that you can make these work in your own setup. Uh, now for most users, uh, you're not going to have to worry about this too much. You can deal with the basic file uh, folder permissions uh, that we have set up before and we talked about in the last screencast. For instance, if I just uh, click edit on here, uh, you'll be able to deal pretty much with these basic permissions here and you should be in good shape and it shouldn't cause you any issues. Uh, but for some of you that may be in business environments or you want to really fine tune who has access to what folders, maybe you've got different groups in a company that you're trying to figure out how to limit permissions and grant uh, permissions to others, uh, it might be a little more complex for you. So what I'm going to do is let me just cancel uh, this for a minute here. And we're just going to go over to our server tab here. We're going to go into storage. And I've got this uh, test folder here. And I want to use this to show how this works. You can see inside here I've got a second folder. And what I want to do is just come over here and click the wheel here. And I'm going to say edit permissions. Okay, so it's going to click on that. Now, there are two uh, types of, of um, permissions that OS X Server can use. Uh, the first is the basic POSIX uh, permissions. POSIX stands for Portable Operating System Interface for Unix. And those POSIX uh, permissions are broken down into two basic groups. You have your access uh, permissions, which are like your actions, things you can do. And you have your privileges type permissions, which are your people, right? Who can do what with uh, that particular file or folder. And so they're broken down into different types. And so right here, this is what sort of the standard uh, POSIX permissions would look like. Uh, you're going to have... Uh, your your user okay or people over here and then you're gonna have your action or permission to access over here now you're gonna get three kind of core uh, permission sets here with uh, POSIX you're gonna get uh, an uh, admin uh, so you got an owner okay so whoever the owner is right here you'll get groups okay so whatever groups have access and that's for here this is root and this is wheel okay just another word for groups there and then you have others which are just other people uh, and what their level of access is. And those are the three core ones that you get with, uh, with POSIX in Unix. And so again, this is a, an individual user, this is the owner, this is the group, and this is other people who are outside the group, and they're represented here by these icons as well. Over here are the different access uh, privileges that are available, and as I showed you, if I just click on this, uh, we've got these four categories. You have read and write, which gives you access to the file to read it and to change it. You've got read only, uh, which allows you just to see the file but not make those types of changes or write to it. You've got write only, uh, where you can write to the file, uh, but that's it, or to the folder. And then you've got none, where there is no access, and you won't be able to access that or see that uh, file or folder at all. And so those are, those are the basic permissions. Now, there are times, though, where you might need more fine-tuning. For instance, maybe within the groups, you don't want to set the whole group to read or write only or, or any of that kind of stuff because you've got certain folders uh, inside that where you want to give people different permissions and you want to fine-tune it a little more. That's where ACLs come in. Now, an ACL is an access control list, and that allows for the fine-tuning of these permissions. Uh, access control lists were uh, around more in the Windows type environment, uh, but they're brought over here to allow some fine tuning inside the Unix operating system. And so ACLs, uh, again, become that fine tune, and ACLs take priority. So the system will look for these access control lists first, and it will use those to assume uh, who has privileges or doesn't. And then if those aren't available, then it'll default over to the POSIX uh, privileges. And so right now, since I don't have any ACLs, it's just going to read this straight up. Now, if I come down here and just click the, uh, the plus here, now let me just do that on uh, one of these. Let's just create a plus here. I can add uh, a new user or a group. And so let me just add a group to this folder. 
I'm just going to put in, let's say, my kids group. There it is. And so I've just added the kids group now to my list. If I just hit this drop down here, you'll notice if I give my kids group, I can give it whatever I want. Uh, I can give them, and now I get this different set of uh, controls here. I've got the ability to give full control, which is all the admin privileges and full control over this particular folder. Uh, I can give read and write, uh, or read, or just write. And so it's up to me which one I want to do. So let's just do read and write on this one. Now, if I just hit this drop down, I've got all these various ACLs in here. And so these access control lists in OS X Server are broken into four categories. I've got administration, I've got read, write, and inheritance. So let me just explain those. If I just click this drop down here under administration, uh, you have the right under administration to change permissions, which allows you to change the basic permissions on the file. And to give you an idea of how that works, let me just come in here to the finder for a minute. And let's just go with the information on this folder. I'm just going to bring this in here so you can see it. And so inside OS X Server, I've got these different sharing and permissions uh, stuff inside here. Let me just click this real quick and log in. So I'm just going to do that. So now I've unlocked it so I can look at it. And you can see there's my system wheel and everyone. You don't see the other changes yet because I haven't made those. And so what I'm going to do, let me just pop this down here. And let me just leave this kind of hanging on the side over here. I haven't added this yet where I've saved it to allow it to show up, but once I do, it'll show up over here. You can change some permissions over here as well inside uh, the system here. I can make some different changes to the privileges and things like that if I want to. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it if you got server running. Just do make these changes in server. It'll make it a lot easier. So that's right there. I'm just going to pop it down, but I'll pull it up later to show you. So I can change permissions or I can change the owner and I can make myself the owner or put someone else as the owner of the folder if I access that. Okay, if I check this box that would create an owner. Now whenever you see a dash it means that there's one thing that's checked underneath the category, not all of them. If I check all of them then you notice that that changes to a full check mark for that entire category. So it's up to me. If I uncheck that it unchecks everything. Okay, so let me just put, do the next one. Under read, I can read the attributes uh, of a uh, folder, you know, like the name and size and those kinds of things. Um, if I uncheck that, then that little side box, I won't be able to see that information in OS X. I can read extended attributes, and these are extra attributes that might be added by third-party developers and those sorts of things. I can list the folder contents uh, to see what's inside there to read it. I can traverse folders where I can execute uh, applications uh, and open things. And then I've got read permissions where I can read what's in that folder. And so again, I can fine tune this to decide exactly what I want people to be able to do. Maybe I just want them to only be able to see what's in there. Or maybe I don't even want them to see what's in there and I can undo these read attributes and, uh, and do it that way. Let's close that down. Then I have write attributes. And again, I can write attributes to the file. I can write extended attributes, the same kind of thing, right? The different uh, third-party attributes that I might want to write. I can create files uh, inside uh, this particular folder. I can create another folder inside here. I can delete things if I check this box, or and I can delete subfolders and files underneath a particular file if I want to do that. And so again, if I don't want anything deleted, I can just get rid of this and I can't do any deletion. Notice that it's changed it to custom now because I've made these changes put it back and now it shows read and write because this is a standard read and, read and write layout. Okay, and then inheritance. And inheritance is an important uh, concept to understand as well because what inheritance does is it, it, it allows you to um, inherit everything in the subfolder so that once I write to this subfolder, I write something else in there, it's going to inherit all of these different permissions that I have set up for the kids group so that those things will transfer over. Now this comes in handy if I've got a bunch of subfolders under, under one top folder, I can then use inheritance to, um, in essence, uh, make all those permissions happen to the subfolders and everything underneath it. So I only have to make the change once instead of multiple times. So that gives you inheritance. So that shows you how this works here for these various uh, settings. Now, a couple of things as you're thinking about this. Uh, you only want to use these ACLs when it's necessary. All right, it's, it's, if you don't really need them or you don't need to do the fine tuning or you don't know why you need them, then you probably don't and you don't need to mess with this at all. Um, but if you do, you want to use um, uh, as few groups as possible because too many groups makes this crazy to start to manage. So you really want to think through your structure ahead of time to make sure you've got it set up right so that you don't run into problems. Uh, as much as you can, you might want to apply it to groups instead of users uh, because if you can put a bunch of people in a group, it's a lot easier to manage them by a group than it is by individual users. It'll take you a long time to go through and make those changes and figure things out. 
Um, another thing is if you want to protect files, I probably set uh, a lot of the different permissions here to protect certain files and then use an ACL to give specific privileges maybe to a group or in that case if there is just one individual or somebody you can do that with an individual that's a good way to do it as well. Um, and so um, again the other thing you want to do is avoid as many um, as many of these none you know where you, where you have um, you can't read or write avoid a lot of that stuff in here where you say none because you will run the risk of locking yourself out so as much as you can avoid that so you don't run into problems and uh, and then like I said just make sure you make these changes in here I wouldn't do them in the side panel of OS 10 so let me go ahead I'm just gonna say okay to this uh, right now and so now that I've done that I've changed this on the test folder and so let's pull up our other our uh, information here in the finder let me just do it uh, all over again here so we can take a look at it we're gonna say get info and so now you can see let's move this over here that the kids have been added on here with the read and write permissions and you can see they're right there and everything's set so these changes we make will make the change to the system as well uh, not just to the particular file uh, just within server now let's go ahead and uh, click this wheel here and I'm gonna say edit permissions again just to take a look and see and uh, what I want to do is let's say I want to get an idea for um, you know what has precedence okay so let's say if I move say if I uh, if I've got these set up here I want to say which rule will take place first if I come in here I can sort the uh, list canonically okay so what it'll do is it put it'll put it in the order of what comes first and then second third and fourth and so uh, because I already listed it at the top it didn't make any change but it will list those things for you so you can get an idea for what has precedence over what that's just a simple way to make that work uh, on there okay so let's cancel that now in here I've got a subfolder and let me just show you that subfolder. I'm going to edit permissions. And you'll notice this subfolder does not have any of the permissions that I set in the test folder because this folder was created before I even did this. I didn't create the folder after the fact, and the system look, would look at it and inherit the permissions of the top folder. So I don't have that information in here, as you can see. Uh, let me just cancel that. But I want this to have the same um, you know, permissions as the one above it. So if I come up here, I can come down to this and I can say propagate permissions. And if I say propagate permissions, I can say what I want to propagate. Uh, this is all of the um, basic uh, POSIX stuff. And this is our access control list. And I want those access control lists to be propagated. So I'm going to say OK. So now it's propagating it to the subfolders. You can see that it's starting to write that. And so now when I come in here and I say edit permissions, uh, you'll notice now all the kids information that I put for that folder is on here and with all of the different information there. And so it's all set up and it's all been propagated. Uh, if I wanted to, uh, I, if I wanted to add, edit this stuff later, uh, maybe I want to fine tune this folder, I just make inherited entries explicit and then I can go in and edit these things. Let me just cancel that. So that gives you an idea of how these different permissions work. Again, it can get tricky with how you set it up depending on your structure. You want to make sure you just got it just right uh, so that you don't run into permissions pro, uh, problems. But I wanted to show you how this works in OS X Server. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.